Hello! I would like to welcome you to the Laramie K Optician Works Training Center, where today we are going to learn how to measure for the placement of the top of a lined bifocal and lined trifocal. Sure enough, taking a measurement to mark for the location of a lined segment bifocal or trifocal. Now these videos go out around the entire world and you all know that I actually think there is nothing wrong with a good old fashioned straight top 28 lined bifocals and to some extent lined trifocals are still very popular outside the US where of course we tend to do progressives for everything. When you are taking the measurement for the placement of the top of a lined bifocal or trifocal, you are going to talk with your customer. You're going to be looking at some things. You're going to be listening to what your customer says. You're going to watch their head, their body movement. You're going to ask some questions. We'll do this with Kansi the customer in a minute. We're gonna look at the old pair of glasses that has a lined segment if they're already wearing them. All really good optician stuff that if you don't do, you are gonna get this wrong and have a remake. Right, you know, hear me now and believe this later. There is a rule of thumb. I kind of feel a little weird even repeating it. Um, we were always, you know, it's just driven home in school and, um, you know, in articles and everything that if someone is very tall and you're setting a lined bifocal, you set it low so that they don't trip and fall. You know, I guess maybe, but if you've talked and looked and listened and, you know, for all you know, the seven foot guy may say, every time I have a pair of blind bifocals, man, I have to come back and have them bring it up. Okay, <laughs> so talk with them, ask them if they want that or not. We are gonna put a dot, we're going to measure, we're going to draw a line on the demo lenses. That line can be what you see is what you get. Use that line. I'll show you this in a second at the bench with Consi. The line, put them on and the customer tell you, yes, that's a good spot for it. Remember, if you are a newbie, if you are unsure, if you have high remakes, those are becoming a problem. You've got a really fussy customer. Remember that a metal frame with adjustable nose pads gives you some play. Bring those pads in, you're gonna bring the line up. Spread the pads apart, you're gonna bring the line down without having to do a remake. I originally was gonna put, you have about two millimeters of play and that seemed kinda of high and then I said, well, one's kinda of low, so. You have 1.5637 millimeters of play with adjustable nose pads. Last time we got together, I think it might have been one video before that, we talked about the difference between a binocular PD and a monocular PD. Lined segments, because you can see them, we use a binocular, even for, on both sides, same number. Because if I didn't, and there was a lot of difference between the two, the one segment would look closer to the nose than the other. It's a cosmetic thing. By all means, if you have higher powers or extreme asymmetrical, extreme asymmetry of someone's face, then you can choose to use a monocular. Bad's gonna happen. And OC placement is actually chosen by the lab in a lined bifocal. How far up above the line the OC will be placed. You need to talk to your lab. If you have high powers, you may need to specify an OC height for a lined bifocal. We are gonna go over to the bench and sit down with Kansi, the customer who has just arrived, and this is what we are after. I have this series of drawings from the website which are far better than anything that I could recreate on the whiteboard. When we sit down with Kansi, the customer, here is what we are after. 
for placing the top of a lined bifocal. For a textbook fit, you want the top of the segment, or the line, to align with the lower lid, as shown. For a lined trifocal, for a textbook fit, you align the top of the segment with the lower pupil margin, as shown. And these two drawings show how or where we measure that height to record it. For a bifocal, we go from the top of that segment to the deepest point in that frame where the lens sits within the eye wire through the boxing system. We do not go straight down from the center of the segment or the top of the segment necessarily, but from the top of the segment position to the bottom of the lens. The same for a trifocal. A lot of ground to cover today, a lot of conversation to have with my customer, so that's what we're gonna jump right into. Most people, when fitting a line bifocal, are going to be older folks who are already wearing a lined bifocal. Makes your job a whole lot easier. The best tool for this job of fitting the new one is their old pair. Let's talk about how you use that. We're gonna play it in a couple of different ways and kind of role play back and forth. One part, she's gonna be feeding me some information. Second part, I'm gonna be kind of drawing out that information from her. Both techniques are gonna be necessary. We'll learn how to do this. First things first, what is our favorite thing to do? Just simply look. This is your job. I need to look and I am staring directly at the top of the segment and looking at the relationship between it and her lower pupil margin, which I just showed you over on the whiteboard. So here I am, I'm looking. Okay. She's been wearing this pair of glasses for probably two, three years, right? <laughs> Have you ever had a trouble with that line being too high or too low in a pair? No, not really. Okay. Great, nice place to start, but we're not quite done here yet. Now, I could say that, and I can say, have you ever had trouble with the line being too high or too low? And she may instead say, um, I think that it's been high because I find myself falling a few times and then I've had to have them remade, so. Okay, very typical response. That is the problem. If we set a line bifocal a little bit too high and you look down, you're not looking through the distance portion and you'll fall down, not a good thing. She may say, when I say, have you ever had a problem with the line being too high or too low? Um, I think it was too low because a lot of times I just kept having to like push my glasses up and kind of adjust them. So again, had to get them remade. Okay. Again, very normal response. You're going to hear this. Luckily, a remake in a line bifocal, if you have to do it, is not usually too costly. If you have one of them and you're priced upright, you can, you can absorb that. But you shouldn't have to if you follow all the things that we're talking about here. Again, very typical if you set the segment too low, you look down, it's not where it's supposed to be. Suddenly you've got to lift your head up and you're picking up the glasses and trying to find it. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna reverse roles a little bit. It may not sound a whole lot different, but I'm the one who's kind of drawing out the information a little bit more. Have you ever had a trouble with the line being too high or too low? No, why do you ask? Textbook fit in that pair, that one appears a little bit low to me. Mm. Do you find you need to kind of pick them up or, or push them back or lift your head an awful lot? Or is it in a good spot? Uh, no, I guess if you had to really think about it, I do have to tilt my head back a little bit every once in a while. Okay. Yeah. Um, is there anything at work or anything that you do that would kind of push to leaving it there? Or do we want to bring it up maybe a millimeter? I think you want to bring it up. Because okay. the more I think about it, the more I think I'm going this way. <laughs> okay, and I'll draw a line on this pair so you can see exactly what okay. we're going to put in. Sounds good. good. Okay. Now, of course, the reverse happens. And I say, have you ever had a trouble with the line being too high or too low? No, why do you ask? Well, by textbook fit, that one seems pretty high to me, which would mean generally that you kind of need to hold your head down a little bit. Maybe when you're driving, you're kind of looking over the segment, if you will. Now, some people love it that way. Mm -hmm. Do you think you'd be a little bit more comfortable? Do you find you have to do that, or should we just leave things alone? No, I think I'm okay. I okay. never really yeah. noticed the difference. Okay, perfect. When I put the line on here, we're going to make sure it's in the exact same spot. Perfect. Good. All right. Do you hear that? 
you know, the conversation that we're having, that is what you must do when fitting a line bifocal. All right, we've gotten through that part. Now it is time to take our measurement for that new pair of glasses. Would you take your old glasses off for me, please? And would you put your new pair on? Just like last time, pre-adjustment. Gonna make sure that the frame is sitting level on her face. Gonna make sure that it's not riding up on her temples. And what I want here, we just talked about this over on the whiteboard, the importance of nose pads on this frame, is I want the nose pads to be in a very neutral position. I don't wanna risk having them squeezed in and pushing that frame up, and I don't want them spread out, dropping the frame down. Nice and centered, nice and neutral, so I have that wiggle room. If these come back from the lab and they're a millimeter high, she puts them on and she's going, no, nah, that's in the way. All I gotta do is bring those nose pads out a little bit, drop that frame down, now it's in the right place. Freedom you do not have if you have a plastic frame, so always keep that in the back of your mind. Like I said, if your newbies are having remake issues, probably a nice little safety margin for you. So that is looking good. I am not going to attempt to draw a line here because it's really hard to do. And I unfortunately just don't have a black marker. If you're doing this, a black dry erase marker is probably your best friend. I'll make sure it's still pretty sharp. You don't want uh, you know, a thing when it's all matted down like somebody's been jamming it on the paper or something. Just like last time, we're gonna try to go for level. No, nothing here should have changed. I'm gonna try to do a better job. I think last week I was about a half an inch low, okay? And I am going to, to get this started, dot her lower lid. So just shoot your head out for me, relax. Good, looking straight at me. Drop your head just a little bit up, good. I'm checking, I'm looking at her. I'm looking where my dot is. They are right smack perfect on her lower lid. Okay, great, can I have those back? Thank you. Only now am I going to take my PD a stick or any straight edge for that matter and mark that spot with a line. There is the top of the segment. There is the top of the segment. I can put this on. She will see this line. This is the top of the bifocal. Put those back on for me. And regardless whether she's been wearing them or not, I said, what do you think? Does that look good? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. About the same as it was before. Yeah, that's so in, good. I mean, perfect textbook fit. I will try to get some pictures of this. This is, this is really, really good. This is exactly what you want to see. You may choose, and you don't have to, but it's just not a bad idea, is the old reading card. And if reading has been an issue for her, where well, she was saying, well, no, it's been too low for me or too high, say, why don't you take a, grab, you know, take a peek at this, see where the line is, and see if that's going to be good for you. Yeah, it looks good. I can see the crossword puzzle. That's the most important. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Reading cards. I've talked about this many times and I will talk about it again because what is John's favorite saying? Don't say I didn't warn you. Right, you know, hear me now and believe this later. You will notice at the bottom here this white bar. This is our own Laramie K Integrity Series reading card, but even we made the mistake of putting print on this thing that is way too small. Trust me, folks, you, you could have microscopic scribbling at the bottom. If it's on this card, someone is going to insist that they should be able to read it with their new glasses, when in fact no one could. Yeah, I think I could. So if you have these reading cards around, they are wonderful, perfect, especially when we get to teaching her how to use a progressive in a few weeks. Do take some really good white paper or... Um, uh, shipping labels or something and block out anything that is crazy, crazy small, or it will come back to bite you on the bum. Water-soluble marker, don't want to risk losing it at this point. 
I'm going to break out my PD stick and I am going to measure down and I've got 19 and 18. I am going to go with my 18. I kind of liked that one a little bit better. I am going to break this out and I'm going to put my height 18 across because it's always going to be the same. And I have got a bifocal to remind myself. Remembering that bifocals come in straight top 28s, 35s, and 45s, but most of the time it is a 28. So I'm going to put my ST28 in there. Good. So that's recorded. So even if I, you know, went to clean them or someone else did behind me or something, they, I'd have that recorded. I'm not going to lose them. That measurement that I'm looking for, I just got an 18, a really good rule of thumb, another safety thing for you. You generally want that number to be somewhere between 10 and 19. Of course, there are a million exceptions to that. But if you get a number lower than 10 or more than 19, I would double check everything. You may, you're new, you're a newbie, maybe you're reading the PD stick the wrong way, you're on the wrong side of the five or something. A lined bifocal above half the B, major warning sign that something's probably off unless you've got like the giant dinner plate special guy or something. If you are under 10, as we talked about uh, a couple weeks ago, you're going to risk cutting off some of the segment down in the nasal area if you're under 10. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's not normally a good thing either, especially as we talked about if a PD was really narrow, plus you drop it low, you're going to be shaving a whole lot of that bifocal off. Really bad idea. So watch for that as well. Another little safety catch, keep you out of the remake jobs. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you're watching us on Facebook, please do give us a like. Watching us on YouTube, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button down there in the corner and make absolutely certain that every aligned bifocal and maybe even a trifocal comes from Laramie K. I'll see you again next week.